Alrighty, welcome officially to the course. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Yoast SEO plugin. So let's jump over to the back end and let's go to plugins, add new. And we're just going to go ahead and install Yoast just like any other plugin. Yoast SEO by Team Yoast. Let's click install now. It's installed. Let's activate the plugin. And all right, so you might get this message saying notifications to notifications. Let's click in there. And all right, so you can see right now it says good job. We could detect no serious SEO problems. Hopefully you would also have the exact same message. If you do have problems, don't worry. I'm pretty sure by the end of this course, you will have zero problems. But what we want to do right now is to click on the Yoast SEO configuration wizard. So go ahead now and click on the configuration wizard. And okay, so basically there are two different ways how you can install Yoast. You can do it manually or you can get the Yoast team to do it for you, but then you have to pay them. So <laughs> let's just go ahead and click on the very first option in here, configure Yoast SEO. All right. So first things first here is the environment. What kind of site do you have? Is it live or is it under construction? Now, some people might argue that you can install Yoast at any time. It doesn't matter. Now, personally, I like to install Yoast on a site that's live and running. And the reason is because Yoast as a plugin needs data to work with. It needs posts. It needs to have a site that's already built in order for it to be effective. So I'm going to go ahead now and assume that you already have a site that's built and you're simply trying to install Yoast on it. So I'm going to go ahead now and click on option A. My site is live and ready to be indexed. So let's go ahead and click next. All right. So what kind of site? is yours. Is it a blog, an online shop? Mine is a blog. I'm going to go ahead and choose that a blog. Let's go ahead now. So does your site represent a person or a company? Mine's a person and the name of the person is Alex. That's me, Alex. Let's click next. All right. So over here, if you do have social profiles for your business or your website, this is where you'd like to paste them. Okay. So you can go ahead and paste them. I don't have any for now. So I'm just going to go ahead and click next. You can add the uh, profiles later on, by the way, you don't have to do so right now. Now, this is going to be a very, very important part of the installation, the search engine visibility. Now, depending on the complexity of your site, you may have other options available. For example, if you've installed or created custom post types, you will have the options for custom post types and other things like that. However, by default, you definitely want search engines to show your posts in search results. This is an absolute must. Now, pages is a little bit iffy. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes you may not want your pages to show up in search results, because what's the point? If your pages are the standard types of WordPress pages, like the about page, the contact us page, the terms and conditions page, the policy page, you may not want those pages to show up on search results. So for me, I'm just going to go ahead and click no. But again, this is completely up to you. It doesn't matter. You can either go with yes or no. It's really up to you. So I'm going to go ahead and click no. And I'm going to go ahead and click next now. Multiple authors. So mine is just a single author. If you have multiple authors on your site, then you definitely want to choose yes. I'm going to go ahead and stick with no. And all right. So here we have to add the Google Search Console code. By the way, if you don't have your Google account, you do need to create a Google account to work uh, with the Yoast SEO. And if you don't have your Google Search Console, if you don't have an account with them, here is the link right here, but you have to open it in a new tab. Don't click on the link directly because it will take you straight to the site and you'll have to start all over again. So you can simply right click, open this in a new tab. And over here, you can read the article on how to create your account with Google Search Console. It's very straightforward and you really shouldn't have any problems with it. All right. So let me just come back over here and I'm going to go ahead now and get my Google authorization code. That's my email address. I'm going to go ahead and allow. I'm going to go ahead and copy this code right now. And I'm going to paste that in here. Authenticate. Choose a profile. I'm going to go with my SEO.Toscopedia. Click next. All right. So for the title settings, well, you can change your website name. But <laughs> I already assume you have a proper website name. I'm going to change mine to uh, SEO task. All right. SEO tasks. Title separator. I'm just going to stick with the default. Go to next. 
So you can sign up for the newsletter if you want to receive updates and news on how to work with SEO, Yoast SEO, and so on. You can add your name, your email, and sign up for their newsletter. I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. And, of course, we've come to the very end where you can, of course, upgrade to the premium version of Yoast SEO if you want to. Uh, you can undergo, undergo the training as well, such as copyright training, uh, the Yoast SEO plugin training, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And you've done it. Congratulations, you've installed Yoast SEO successfully on your WordPress website. Now that you've installed the Yoast SEO plugin, it is time for me to show you how to connect your site with the Google Search Console. Remember in the previous video where we installed Yoast, there was a particular section where we, we had to authenticate our site uh, using the Google Search Console. Now, if you've ever done this before and you're familiar with this, you can skip this video, move on to the very next one. However, if you have no idea how to connect your site to the Google Search Console, I am here for you. So what you want to do here is this, all right? Go to google.com forward slash webmasters forward slash tools, or alternatively, you can just type in Google Search Console in your Google Search Engine. Remember that you have to be signed into your Google account. So for me right now, I'm going to go ahead and click on add a property. Note that I already have the seo.housecopy.com registered with the Google Search Console already. That's why in this video, I want to use a different site. This one is going to be the moviecharacters.com just to give you an idea of what it's like to register a site for the very first time with the Google Search Console. So let's go ahead now and click on add a property. And then what I'm going to do here is to simply copy my URL. Let's copy that. Jump back over here. Let's paste that. I'm going to go ahead and click add. Alrighty, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the alternate methods, all right? Click on alternate methods. What you want to do is you want to click on the HTML tag. Let's click in there. Now, what you want to do here is to go ahead now and copy this code you see right here. Let's copy that code. Let's copy that. And then from here, I'm going to go back now to my website. Let's come down here to SEO. Click on general. And then from here, click on the webmaster tools. And then in here where we have the Google verification code, I am going to paste everything inside. Then I'm going to remove all the additional uh, letters that are outside the double quotes. So I'm going to remove this, remove that, remove the double quote as well. Let's keep over here to the very front and then remove all these additional uh, letters. We don't need any of this. So it's just the actual code that was inside the double quotes. That's what we need. So let's go ahead now and save our changes. Awesome. Now let's go back in here and let's go ahead now and click on verify. Verify. And there you go. Congratulations. You have successfully verified your ownership of your particular site. So for me right now, I can simply click on continue. And then this is where I can begin to get some information about the statistics of my site, people who have visited the site, crawl errors, and so on and so forth. So that's how to register your site with the Google Search Console. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next class. Now that we've installed the Yoast SEO plugin, it's time to take a look at the features that comes with this plugin. So from the general dashboard, I'm going to go ahead and click on features. And by default, you can see over here that we have every single feature turned on by the plugin. However, you might not need to have all these features turned on. So let's take a look at them one by one. First of all, we have the SEO analysis. Now, this is where the plugin will analyze whether or not your article has been optimized for search engines. This is probably the single most important feature this plugin offers, and you absolutely must make sure this is turned on at all times. Second is the readability analysis. And guess what? I am going to turn this off. <laughs> now, what does this exactly do? What this does is the plugin will analyze the way you have written your article. It will check your grammar, your sentence structure, things like that, and then will provide you with tips on how to better improve the way you write. Now, on the surface, this sounds like a really awesome feature, right? You're getting to learn how to become a better writer. However,
The problem is that you might become way too mechanical in the way you write. Your natural style of writing will disappear because now you're thinking, okay, I have to pass this analysis. I have to pass the readability analysis. I have to make sure my sentences are short. I have to make sure I'm writing in the, in the active voice and not the passive voice, things like that. So your natural style of writing could disappear as a result. And I want to show you an example. This is a real article I have written on my blog. And it was basically an article about the best web hosting company. It was pretty extensive. Over here, you can see I have the readability analysis on green, which is good. And also the SEO analysis on green as well, which is awesome. However, take a look at the requirements to pass the analysis for the readability test. By the way, this was just a coincidence that I happened to have passed the readability analysis because I never write to pass the readability analysis. I only write to pass the keyword uh, the SEO analysis. But take a look at this. I actually have one problem. It says 33.9% of the sentences contain more than 20 words, which is more than the recommended maximum of 25%. Try to shorten the sentences. So now I could be thinking, ah, okay, well, I want this to be green. So I'm going to go back to my article and start to check out all the sentences that are more than uh, 20 words. I'll try to shorten them, stuff like that. You know, so you can become very, very mechanical and take a look at the other requirements. Like, for example, uh, let's see, none of the paragraphs are too long. 32.8% of the sentences contain a transition word or phrase. So in all honesty, personally, I typically don't recommend turning this on. However, it's up to you. If you would prefer the readability analysis, then by all means, you can keep this on. However, if you prefer to write in your own style, then please turn this off because you don't want to become too mechanical in the way you write your articles. Now, constant content, we'll talk about this a bit later, but you definitely want to keep this on. Basically, your constant content is the best content you've written on your blog. Like if you were asked to present your best articles, your best articles will typically be the cornerstone content. So keep this on. Text link counter, I'm going to turn this off. This basically counts how many uh, links you have in your articles and I really don't care about that. XML sitemaps, absolutely keep this on. This will generate sitemaps for your site, which is awesome for Google and other major search engines. Next is the right integration and I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. What this does it, is that it basically checks to see if your site has been indexed on a weekly basis. But this is not a very useful service because if you've installed Yoast SEO plugin and you apply everything I teach you in this course, your site is guaranteed to be indexed at all times. So you don't need this service telling you that your site has been indexed, your site has been indexed, and so on and so on. You don't need this service. The admin bar menu, this will basically show your Yoast settings up here in the admin bar. You can keep it on, you can turn it off if you want. I'll keep it on. And then finally, we have the security, no advanced settings for authors. What this does is it prevents authors that you might have on your site from removing posts from search results. So you can either decide to keep this on or keep this off. If you are the only person writing articles on your blog, then you can just turn it off because you don't need the service. However, if you do have other people who write articles for you and you don't want them to be able to remove their posts from search results, then you should absolutely keep this on. But mine is just a blog and I'm the only writer, so I'm just going to keep this off. All right, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead now and save my changes. And there you go. So it's kind of interesting that it's on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. This is not a coincidence. This is actually how I like to uh, set up the features for my Yoast SEO plugin. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. The next task on our list is to work on the search appearance. And this is where we're going to make some major changes as to how the plugin works with our posts, our pages, and our content in general. And as you can see right now, we do have seven tabs. Starting off with the general tab. Now on the general, we have the title separator. I don't need to change this. I'm just going to leave this as it is. And then we have the home page. You definitely want to make sure that your home page is optimized. And you can see by default, we have the title tags filled out. We have the site name, we have the page title, which in this case would be homepage or however you choose to name your homepage. And then we have the separator and then we have the site description. 
I typically like to remove the page. I don't need that. So my title is going to simply read right now. It's going to read the site name, uh, the separator, and then the site description. That's exactly how I like my homepage title to be optimized. Now for the meta description, you definitely want to spend some time filling out your meta description. Make sure you use the keywords which your website is all about. So as an example right now, my site is seo.ascopedia.com. So you can imagine my site being all about SEO, how to rank up in Google, stuff like that. So I can say, for example, that uh, we focus on search engine optimization and keyword analysis. So you can see right now that my meta description has the keywords search engine optimization. It also has keyword analysis. And this is just a very, very short example. You may want to make sure that your meta description is filled out very, very well. Be very descriptive with your meta description and make sure that you use the keywords, the keywords that define your website. Make sure you use them in your meta description. Now for the knowledge graph, I chose person because I am an individual writing for my personal blog. However, if you are a company, you will have the option of providing your company name and a company logo. Make sure the logo is at least 200 pixels by 200 pixels. That is the recommended minimum size for your company logo. I'm going to change this back to person. All right, let's see if it changes. Awesome. Now let's go to the content types. Now for posts, you definitely want to show posts in your search results. Now for the title template and meta description template, you can fill these two out. However, you really, really need to customize the title and the meta description for each of your posts individually. This is one of the reasons why I don't spend time editing the title template here or the meta description because I always customize each title and meta description of every one of my posts. What this does here is if you don't customize your titles or your meta description for your posts, the plugin, the Yoast SEO plugin will simply use the format that you've laid out over here. So for your meta description, you can just go ahead and say something like, let's add the percentage percentage, and then you can say something like excerpt, all right? And then percentage percentage. So this is just in case you decide to be very lazy <laughs> and not add the custom meta description for a particular post. The Yoast SEO plugin would use this as the meta description, which would just display the excerpt. And then we also use this one as the title for that particular post. All right, now date in snippet preview, I am going to click on show. And the reason is because if you're someone who writes posts regularly, you definitely want to make sure that the date your post was written and published is shown in the snippet preview because people are more likely to click on your link if they know that your that post was written uh, recently. So that's one of the reasons why you want to show the date in your snippet preview. Uh, Yoast SEO meta box, yes, I'm going to leave that on show. Pages, I'm going to click on no for that one and then hide as well. And then for the Yoast SEO meta box, I'm going to hide that as well for pages. Again, keep in mind that you might have other uh, available options in here depending on the kinds of plugins you've installed or if you've created uh, custom post types as well. But you typically want to make sure that your posts are set up to show in the search results and then your pages are set up to not show in your search results. So I'm going to go ahead now and save my changes. Now let's go down to media. Now media, you don't need to change anything in here. Redirect attachment URLs to the attachment itself. Yes, just leave this as it is. There is no need for you to change this. Let's now jump onto taxonomies. Okay, now show categories in search results. Yes, I like to show my categories in my search results. And then for the title template, I'm actually going to edit this one out and I'm going to show you what I like to use. And you can copy this if you want. So it's going to be term uh, underscore title. This will display the categories name, the name of that particular category. So percentage, percentage, and then let's have a dash and then percentage, percentage, and then site uh, name and then percentage, percentage. So this will simply show the, oh, I'm sorry, term, not turn. <laughs> All right, term underscore title and then the site name. So this will show the categories, the name of the category and then my site's name as well in the uh, search results.
And you also want to make sure there is a space, actually, there's a space after the last percentage and then uh, a space between the dash and the first percentage. So, awesome. All right. So that's going to be for the title template. For the meta description template, very simply, I'm going to say percentage, percentage, and then category underscore description. All right. So you also want to make sure that your categories have proper descriptions. And just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about, uh, let me just quickly jump down here to my posts and show you one of the categories I have here as an example. So you can see keyword optimization. I have a category called keyword optimization. And then the description here says, this category of posts focus on keyword optimization and how to optimize every post for major search engines. So you want to make sure that all your categories have proper descriptions and make sure that the keyword that defines that category is included in your description. Very, very important. All right. So that's it for categories. Uh, the Yoast SEO meta box, yes, let's show that. Uh, for tags, you don't need to show tags in your search results, in all honesty. So I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to hide this one as well. I don't need to uh, display my tags. All right, so next up, we have the format post format. I'm going to go ahead and disable this one as well because there is no need to have your format-based archives show up in your search results. There is simply no need for that. So I'm going to disable this. And then finally, we have the category URLs. I am going to remove this. What this does is it will simply remove the word category from the URL of that actual category itself. You don't need to show the word category in your URLs. So I'm going to go ahead now and save my changes. And that's it for the very first part of our search appearance. We've talked about the general content types, media, taxonomies. Join me in the next class where we'll take a look at the archives, breadcrumbs, and RSS. Welcome back to Search Appearance Part 2, and here we're talking about the archives, breadcrumbs, and RSS. So stand off with the archives, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and disable my date archives. I'm going to keep both the author archives and date archives disabled. And the reason why I do this is because this actually helps to prevent the possibility of duplicate content. You really, really do not want duplicate content on your WordPress website. That will be really bad for your search engine rankings. So by disabling both the author and date archives, you stand a better chance of avoiding duplicate content. Now for the special pages, the search pages and for for pages, I'm just going to go ahead and leave the template as they are, because in all honesty, these do not really contribute that much to your search engine rankings. So I'm just going to leave these as they are. Let's save our changes. And let's move on to breadcrumbs. Now, breadcrumbs tend to be a bit controversial because there are people who like breadcrumbs and there are those who do not like breadcrumbs. Now, those who like breadcrumbs claim that, well, breadcrumbs serve two major functions. One, they help visitors and users better navigate their way through a WordPress website. And second, search engines, uh, crawl engines are better able to index a site when breadcrumbs are used. Now, both to a certain extent are true but they're not necessarily true. And what I mean here is this. If you're talking about users being able to better navigate their way through a WordPress website through the use of breadcrumbs, well, guess what? If that site has a well-designed menu system to begin with, breadcrumbs will be redundant. If, you've, if you have a well-designed functional menu navigational system on your WordPress website, you're not going to need to use breadcrumbs. And second, talking about search engines being able to index a site better when breadcrumbs are active. If you've created a sitemap and you create content regularly, search engines will still be able to index your site regardless. So in all honesty, breadcrumbs can be redundant as long as you do the other things right. So personally for me, I'm going to leave them disabled. However, if you insist on using breadcrumbs, you can enable them and then you'll have to come in here and fill the prefix, separator and other things like that. You also have the option of adding uh, breadcrumbs specifically for the different kinds of taxonomies that you might have on your WordPress website. There's also an article on how to add breadcrumbs to your WordPress theme, courtesy of the Yoast SEO tutorial. So you can click on the link right there and uh, this will take you to the article. All right, let me just save my changes. And oh, actually, let me disable the breadcrumbs and then save my changes. <laughs> I don't want breadcrumbs. All right. So last but not least, I don't use RSS either, but if you do, then you can come in here and add your settings for the content to put before each post, as well as the content to put after each post in your RSS feed. And you can see these are the variables. We have author link, 
post link, blog link, as well as blog description link. And these are the descriptions for each variable. So you can come in here and customize the template to your own needs. So that's pretty much it for the search appearance with Yoast SEO. I hope you've learned a lot. I hope you enjoyed the course. If you have any questions about any of these, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to assist you in any way that I can. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next class. Let's now take a look at the search console for the Yoast SEO plugin. And the search console, what this does is it basically shows you all the data, the different kinds of data, whether it's a page or a post or an image or a video on your site that has been crawled by a search engine and that you had uh, some issues with. So as an example right now, you can see I have an image, image underscore 0742, image underscore 5540. I have a page here, which is our courses. I have a link here to my site map and so on and so forth. All these links have some issues and you can see to the extreme right where we have the response code, it is 404. So basically a response code refers to the status of a page or an image or a post whenever it's visited by either an individual or in this case, a search engine. 404 is the code for that particular page or image not being found. And for a complete list of all these codes, you can simply go to Google and just type in the uh, HTTP status codes and there are quite a number of them. 404 is one of the most popular ones and that means not found. Uh, 403 is also very, very popular, which means forbidden. So these basically are the two you need to know, 403 and 404. So right now you can see that most of the links I have here that have issues are all 404. And let's see, yep, it's basically all 404, 404, 404. So what this means is all these pieces of data, all these pages or images, they no longer exist on my site. It's possible that I've deleted them. However, the links still remain. So if you have stuff like this showing up, there are a few things you can do. First of all, you can create something called a redirect. In this case, if anyone visits this particular link or the old link that has the issue, when you create a redirect, that person will automatically be transferred to the new URL that you've created here with the redirect. Unfortunately, this particular feature is only available with the Yoast SEO Premium plugin. But don't worry, I will show you in the very next video how you can actually redirect uh, broken links to uh, normal functioning links. I'll show you how you can do that using a free plugin. So don't worry about that. So if you don't want to create a redirect, you can actually view, you can view the links. In this case, let me view our courses. Let's see our courses. And you can see right now it's not found. It's, it's, been, it's been deleted. So this is just a confirmation that indeed this page is not found. It's deleted. If I don't want to create a redirect and I want the plugin to ignore this particular link, I can simply say, just Mac it as fixed. So when you Mac as fixed, you're basically acknowledging that, okay, it's broken and I don't want to do anything about it. Just leave it as it is. You could also just tick the box for the particular link and then come up here and then also just click on Mac as fixed. If there are any number of links in here that you want to Mac as fixed at once, you can simply just click on the boxes and then just come over here and then mark them as fixed. And that's all you need to do. All right, let me just scroll all the way down here. Let me just make sure that that is all. Okay, so 15 items were not found. That's okay. This, by the way, is for the desktop. Oh, oh, here we go. I was looking for this. So we have 15 not found, but guess what? There's another one here, which is other. Let me click in there. So this is a different one. This is the response code of 400. Let's check out what 400 means. 400 in this case means a bad request. The server cannot or will not process the request due to an apparent client error. Don't worry about this. This is perfectly normal. So if you have any links like this that involve your uh, WP-admin folder and you have a response code of 400, that's perfectly normal. Don't worry about this. Let's go back to not found and let's go to a smartphone. So again, search engines will also call your website using a smartphone's uh, screen size and then see if there are any broken links. In this case right now, we do have videos that seems to be broken. Let me view that and see. Yep, it's not found on mobile. That's fine. Feature phone, nothing has been found in here. And then finally, we have settings where you can simply uh, re-authenticate your profile uh, with Google if you haven't done so already. But going back to the desktop, 
I also just want to talk about the difference between last called and first detected. Now, you might notice some dates here are kind of interesting. For our courses, I have, it was first detected May 12th, 2017, and it was last called March 26th, 2018. The reason why we have 2017 here is because this particular domain, seo.taskopedia.com, I created this domain last year. And I used this same domain to make the very first version of this particular course you're watching. And this was over a year ago. So the search engines will remember. They'll remember that, hey, wait a minute. I called this same domain about a year, year ago or two years ago. That was the first time I called this particular domain. So that's why you can see it was first detected May 12th, 2017. So don't be concerned or be surprised that, wait a minute, you have 2017 here and then you have 2018. What's happening? This is the reason why, uh, basically, this was first detected back in 2017 because I built this site back in 2017 and I also installed the USSU plugin back then and it crawled my website. So that's why you have May 12th, uh, 2017. All right, so that's it for the Search Console. Join me in the very next class where I will now show you how you can redirect the broken links that you have in here. Alrighty, as I promised in the previous video, I'm going to show you how you can create redirects using a fantastic free plugin known as the Redirection Plugin. It is by John Godley, so please go ahead and download, install, and activate the plugin. Now, once you do that, you will see under your Tools tab, you will see Redirection. So you can click in there, and this will be the tab for the actual plugin itself. So over here right now, we can add a new redirection. We can add the source URL and then the target URL. So as an example, let me go back to my SEO search console and let's take a look at this broken link right here, which is our courses. Let me click on view just to see. So it's definitely broken. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to copy the URL, not everything, just URL after the actual uh, domain. So I'm going to copy our courses. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back to my redirection tab and I'm going to paste that as the source URL. Let me paste that in here. And then I'm going to redirect this particular link to our sample post as an example. So let me go to all posts. Let's view this post. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to copy this right now. I'm going to copy this once again. Let's copy that. And then I'm going to go back to my redirection. I'm going to paste this in the target URL. Let's paste that. Now let's add our redirect. And there you go. So right now, whenever anyone visits our courses, it will be redirected to the post. So let's try to see this. Let me refresh this page. And there you go. Right now you can see, we can now see the redirection working. Whenever anyone goes to our courses, they will be redirected to the post on categorized WordPress resources at SiteGround. So this is how you can create redirects using this free fantastic plugin known as the uh, redirection plugin. There are other things you can do with the plugin. You can do with groups, uh, fall falls, import export. You have options and other things like that. But I don't want to spend too much time talking about this plugin. If you're interested in learning more, you can simply visit the actual plugin page and you can go down to the installation. And you can read more on how to use uh, the plugin. They do have the full documentation here on the redirection page. Just click on this link and this will take you to the actual website itself where you can read more about this plugin. Another plugin you might want to consider is also the Broken Link Checker plugin. This is by Yanis Elts and Vladimir, Vladimir Felovac. And this is another very popular plugin for fixing uh, redirections and uh, things like that. So with this plugin, you can do maybe even a bit more. You can uh, do things like, let me show you, you can edit a URL, you can unlink, you can set a broken link to be not broken manually. You can also dismiss broken links and so on and so forth. So this is another plugin you might want to consider using, but my personal favorite would be the redirection plugin. So that's how to create redirects using this fantastic free plugin known as redirection. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. Welcome back. And now let's talk about how we can set up social media with the Yoast SEO plugin. And I'm pretty sure you're well aware of the fact that with social media, if you are able to get your audience, your subscribers to share your content on social media, well, that can only be good for you because that means lots of traffic for your blog and for your business. So. To set up social media with Yoast SEO, I'm going to click on social right here, on the social tab. 
And then from here under accounts, this is where you can add the different URLs for all the social media platforms you are active on. As you can see, I have already added the one for Facebook. This is my Facebook page, by the way. If you are interested, please give me a like and follow me on Facebook. I would appreciate it. So that's it for my Facebook uh, URL. You can add yours, add for Instagram, LinkedIn, MySpace, and so on and so forth. Once you're done, you can simply save your changes and you're good to go to the very next tab, which is going to be Facebook. Now, by default, the Open Graph metadata is enabled. What this does here is this. It allows you to customize how you want your individual posts to appear on Facebook whenever they are shared by a subscriber or a reader. Now, because this is enabled, if I go to any one of my posts and I scroll all the way down here to the Yoast SEO box, under the social icon, you can see we have Facebook and Twitter enabled. And now with Facebook, for example, I can decide to add a custom title for this particular post whenever it's shared on Facebook. I can add a description and I can also use an image as well. By the way, you can see that the recommended image size for Facebook is 1200 by 630 pixels. So you can decide to use one featured image for this particular post and then use a separate uh, image for Facebook whenever it's shared on Facebook. Same thing apl applies to Twitter as well. For Twitter, it's 1024 by 512 pixels. So make sure you use the recommended sizes for your images. They'll make them look really good whenever they're shared on Facebook or on Twitter. So that's what the Open Graph metadata does. Make sure it's enabled. Now the Facebook app ID, this will give you access to something called Facebook Insights. Facebook Insights would, would allow you to know how many people came from Facebook and things like that. The problem though is that at the moment, in order to have access to Facebook Insights, you need to create a Facebook app. And to do that, you can go to developers.facebook.com and then from here, click on My Apps and then you can click on Add a New App. The problem here is this, and I'm gonna show you. As an example, let me just say uh, Sample, all right? sample app let me just create the app id and i'm just filling this capture real quick that's a q g p y let's submit that now i don't know if you've been following the news recently about facebook but facebook has been under a lot of backlash recently there was a, this huge scandal where it turns out that facebook was I'm not sure if they were selling the data or they were sharing data. They were sharing the data of their users with third parties. So as you can see right now, Facebook says we are not reviewing apps at this time due to changes we're making to the Facebook platform. So at this point in time, there is really no need for you to configure the Facebook uh, app ID on use because it's not going to work. And I don't think I'm not sure if it will ever work in the future. I don't know, but just in case it works. This is where you can see your app ID. As soon as you follow the steps I've shown you, you will see the app ID in here. Simply click to copy that and then you can come back here and then paste it under the Facebook app ID if you wanted to. Again, fingers crossed, I don't know if this will work in the future. Now for front page settings, again, you can add a custom image for your front page. You can add a custom title and then description. You can simply click on copy home meta description and then this will copy the description that you've copied earlier in the previous uh, video. And then finally, we have the default settings. Now, this is the image that will be used whenever you write a post or publish a post that doesn't have its own featured image. Now, I know that's very highly unlikely because every post you write should have a title, should have a featured image. But just in case, just in case you are having a really bad day and you forgot to add a featured image for a post, whatever image you upload in here will be used as the backup. So as an example, I can click on upload the image and then I can use this one as my backup, use the image and that is it. So I'm gonna go ahead now and save my changes for Facebook. And then we have the same thing for Twitter as well. By default, the Twitter card metadata is enabled and then you can choose the default kind of card to use. You can go with the summary with a large image or just simply the summary if you wanted to. Pinterest, I don't use Pinterest. If you do, please click on the link right here that will tell you how you can confirm or claim ownership of your website via Pinterest and they will show you how you can connect your site to the Pinterest uh, social media platform. And then finally, of course, for Google+, if you have 
a Google Plus page, simply add the publisher page in here and then save your changes and you will be good to go. So that's it for the social media with Yoast SEO. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. So now let's take a look at some of the tools that the Yoast SEO plugin offers us. And to do that, I'm going to come all the way down here to the tools tab. And then by default, we have three major tools. We have the import, export, file editor, and then the bulk editor. So let's take a look at the import and export. Now, this is where you can simply import the Yoast SEO settings of another website to yours and vice versa. So let's say, for example, you have multiple websites and you simply don't want to spend time doing the same configuration over and over again. You can simply export the settings, your Yoast SEO settings from this particular site you're working on. Simply export that and then this will be a zip file. And then you can go to the next website and then import the settings by simply choosing the file that you've exported from your current website. So that's how the import and export works. Then finally, we have the import from other SEO plugins. I do not have any other SEO plugins on my website and that's why it says Yoast SEO did not detect any plugin data from plugins it can import from. If you have other SEO plugins on your site, you will see the list of them listed down here and then you'll have the option of choosing or rather importing settings from them. However, let me be crystal clear here. I do not encourage you to have multiple SEO plugins on your WordPress website. Simply choose one major SEO plugin, which in this case would be Yoast SEO and stick with Yoast SEO. When you start having multiple SEO plugins on your site, you can have clashes. It's kind of like having two captains on one ship. You typically want to choose one major one major SEO plugin, in this case Yoast, and then just stick with it. So if you have any other SEO plugins on your site, I would recommend you deactivate them and uninstall them. You don't need to run them when you have Yoast SEO. Yoast SEO can pretty much do everything that you need for your SEO. So that's it for the import and export settings. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next class. Welcome back. And now we're talking about the second tool, which is going to be the file editor. Now, what this does is it allows us to make changes to some really important files on our WordPress website. And those two files are the robots.txt file and the .ht access file. Now, first things first, I'm going to go ahead now and click on create robots.txt file. You may already have a robots.txt file. So if you don't see this option, that means you already have one. If you don't, it's best you simply click on the button and create your robots.txt file. Now, the natural question you might have is, what exactly is this robots.txt file? Well, this file is what gives instructions to search engines whenever they want to crawl your WordPress website. So you can tell search engines not to crawl certain parts of your website, such as pages. You can tell them to crawl posts, things like that. And the way to do that is by making changes to your robots.txt file. However, I will strongly recommend that unless you know exactly what it is that you're doing, just leave this file as it is. This is all you really need for your robots.txt file. If you want to go deeper, please do your research before you begin tampering with robots.txt file. Same thing goes with the .ht access file. This file is used by WordPress to handle your permalinks. So this is an extremely important file as well. I would recommend you do not make any changes to this file unless you absolutely have to. And if you're going to, make sure you have proper guidance. So that's pretty much it for this particular tool. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. Alrighty, let's take a look at the final tool and that's going to be the bulk editor. Now this allows us to make changes to the titles and meta descriptions of our posts at a glance without us having to go to each individual post to make those changes. So as an example, let me click on the bulk editor. And now over here you can see on my sample website here I only have one post. So what I really want to do here is to jump over to another site over here where I can give you a better idea of how this works. So right now you can see I have two posts. One is the five best WordPress SEO plugins in 2017. The second is seven top tips for WordPress security. Now, this is under the description tab, by the way. You can see I have already written meta descriptions for each of these posts. However, if I feel like this description wasn't optimized enough, I can simply come in here 
and then type in the new description, make it more optimized, and then I can save it, okay? Same thing applies with the title as well. I have titles for all of my posts. So if I feel that one of these titles isn't optimized enough, I can simply go to the corresponding box and then make the change to make it more optimized, add more keywords, and then simply save. That's what the bulk editor allows us to do. It allows us to make changes to our posts at a glance. You can change the titles and change the meta descriptions without having to go into each individual post to make those changes. So that's it for the bulk editor. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next class. Alrighty, hope you're enjoying the course so far. Now, before you proceed, I just want to give you a very quick update. Now, so far, the version of Yoast SEO we've been working with has been the version 7.3, which is the latest version as of today, which is April 25th, 2018. Now, this course you're watching is, this is actually the second version of the course. The very first version of the course, I used version 5.0.1. This was about a year ago. So because there's been a major difference between 5.0.1 and version uh, 7.3, I had to redo all the videos that you've watched so far. However, the next few videos you're going to watch will involve how the Yoast SEO plugin actually optimizes your content for your posts. The reason why these videos are going to be from the previous version of the course is because Yoast SEO hasn't changed in the way it analyzes your content from the previous version of 5.0.1 to this current version of 7.3. So. We will still be working on the same website, which is seo.taskopedia.com. But please keep in mind that the next few videos belong to the first version of this course. You can watch the videos and apply the same principles because, like I said, the way the Yoast SEO analyzes your readability, analyzes your optimization is still the same. It hasn't changed from version 5.0.1 to version, version 7.3. If in the future, maybe in version 7.5, there is a change to how the Yoast analyzes your content, then of course I will make an update to that. But for now, you're good to go. Just watch the next few, next few videos, but just keep in mind that these videos belong to the first version of the course, but you are still good. They are still uh, updated, still relevant for today's uh, most recent version of Yoast SEO. So thank you for watching. And let's proceed. All right, so welcome to what is technically a brand new section where we're going to focus on how we can optimize our content for SEO. And now over here, you can say, do you have an article titled seven top tips for WordPress security? And uh, this is a real article with real content, but you will notice that to the right over here, I do have something called the readability score from Yoast, which is okay. But then I have the SEO score, which is not available. And the reason why the score is not available is because we haven't provided a focus keyword or keywords, all right? So that's the very first thing we need to do. So I'm gonna do that by coming all the way down here. And you're gonna see the box here that asks you for your focus keyword, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead now and type in, let's see, uh, tips for WordPress security. This would be the uh, long tail keyword phrase for this particular article. All right, so now you can see that the score has now turned to orange. You can see over here as well, it's now in orange. And typically with Yoast SEO, you have three different uh, coloring that will indicate different levels of uh, optimization. Red means very bad, orange means okay, while green would mean uh, good. All right, so we should be able to get this article to get to green. Right now it's on orange. So let's see what we're doing wrong. Uh, first of all, it says no meta description has been specified. Our search engines will display copy from the page instead. Now I know you can see something above here that says uh, the focus keyword contains a stop word. Uh, this may not be wise. Ignore uh, things like this whenever you see that, okay, Having stop words in your our focus keyword isn't important anymore. Stop words are usually words like um, in, at, off, for, kind of like prepositions and stuff like that. Don't bother yourself anymore because Google and other search engines are very flexible. They're very adept at reading 
uh, focus keywords that contains top words. So don't worry about this at all, okay? Let's focus on the ones that are red. So over here we have no meta description has been specified. And of course, we know how important meta descriptions are. So what I'm going to do right now is over here I do have the snippet preview. So I can go ahead now and click on edit snippet. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to copy something over from what we have over here. Uh, let's see what we have. I'm just going to go ahead now and copy this particular uh, sentence. I'm going to come all the way down here. I'm going to paste that. Now, of course, we know that in our meta description, we should have the focus keywords, all right? So what we have, let's see, what do we have? Oh, actually, you can see right now that the score has actually turned to green already. So just simply copying that particular sentence that contains our keywords and applying it to our meta description has now made our score turn to green. But nevertheless, we can still improve on this. Let me just go back again and let's see what we have. All right, never mind. Let me just come over here right now and say in this blog post, we're going to offer you seven major tips for WordPress security. You can see we still have a lot more space to write some more words. And now uh, let me just say cyber crime is a big deal. And that is why in this blog post, we're going to offer you seven major tips for uh, WordPress security. That's that's okay. So. I can close the snippet editor, editor right now, and you can see right now that tips for WordPress security has now been boldened. We have that in the meta description. Awesome. So what else is in red? No internal links appear in this page. Con consider adding some as appropriate. All right. So one of the best ways how you can improve your SEO score in general is by keeping people on your site. Don't let them leave. And of course, one of the best ways is, is to add internal links to your articles whenever applicable try to link your current article to another article that you may have written. So let's see what we have over here. Uh, let me say, I'm just going to go ahead now and highlight this particular uh, sentence over here. And I am going to link this, all right? I'm going to link this to another one of my articles, how to make WordPress website SEO friendly with plugins. Let's do that. Open link in a new tab as well. Add the link. Okay. Now, of course, for this particular example, this <laughs> this doesn't have anything to do with SEO. I'm just telling you that whenever you're writing your articles, try to link them to previous articles that you may have written in the past. So we've done that. And now you can see that we no longer have read for that because we've actually introduced uh, one normal internal link, which is awesome. So a few other things that we can do is to add the alt attributes for our images. Okay. So right now I actually don't have any images in here, but I do have the featured image over here. So what I can do right now is to click on it and I am going to add an alternative text and I'll just say tips for WordPress security. All right. Generally, whenever you're using featured images for your posts, try to add your focus keyword or your keywords as the alt text for the featured image, all right? And for the title, uh, let me just say tips for WordPress security as well. Although this isn't technically important for SEO, it's still good to have uh, a decent title. So let's do that. And uh, let's see what we now have over here. Okay, so the remaining ones aren't necessarily that important. And I need to let you know that you should not become uh, obsessed. <laughs> okay, we're trying to get everything here to turn green. It is not important. As soon as your score is now green, you are okay. All right, your SEO score is good. It's good. Don't bother about trying to get everything to green. If you can't get them to green, then don't bother. All right. Like for example, over here right now, it says uh, the keyword density is 0.4%, which is too low. Uh, the figures keyword was found three times. What the basically what this this is basically saying right now is that we haven't used the phrase. Uh, top tips for WordPress security enough times in the article. So in order to get this to turn green, we'll have to apply the phrase uh, top tips for WordPress security a few more times in the article. And it may not make sense because anyone who is reading the article will keep on saying uh, top tips for WordPress security. The next paragraph, they'll see top tips for WordPress security. It will just become too obvious that you're trying to 
optimize your content for the Google search engine as opposed to uh, optimizing the content for the user experience. And that's a big mistake. You should always write your articles for your audience first and then write the articles for uh, your search engines. Okay, so that's pretty much it. We have optimized our content for SEO. I can go ahead now and save the draft because we still have to try and optimize it for the readability as well. So thank you for watching the video. I will see you in the next class. All right, so in the previous video, we successfully optimized our content for SEO. And as a result, we got the green score for the SEO, for the SEO but our readability is still set to orange, which means okay. So let's see how we could possibly improve this. Let's come all the way down here. You're going to see the readability section, so you can click in there. And now what we have here is the analysis. So we have some green and then we have some red. So what do we have here? We have uh, for the 3.2% of the sentences contain more than 20 words, which is more than the recommended maximum of 25%. Try to shorten the sentences. Hmm. Okay. The next one here is 25.6% of the sentences contain passive voice, <laughs> which is more than the recommended maximum of 10%. Okay. Now, if you click on any one of these links, like click on passive voice as an example, this will take you to the Yoast blog where you can read more about passive voice and how you can write uh, better, how you can change it to an active voice. Also, when you click on the I next to each result, it will highlight where in your article you are making that particular error in. So as an example, if I click on the I for the uh, sentences contain more than 20 words and I scroll back up, you can now see where we have paragraphs and sentences containing more than 20 words. Same thing with the uh, passive voice analysis as well. Now here's the thing, okay? My personal advice to you is don't let these kinds of analysis affect the way you write. Sure, yeah, when it comes to the issue of passive voice and active voice, maybe you can do a better job of trying to write in the active voice as opposed to the passive voice. But in analysis like, oh, this sentence contains more than 20 words, unless it's very extreme, maybe where you have maybe 30 words, maybe 40 words in a single sentence, then yeah, maybe you might want to try to see how you can make that better. However, in instances like this where we have, possibly this might have maybe 21 or 22 words, don't bother yourself. As long as your content is really good and it makes sense and uh, people are actually learning, no one is going to care whether your sentence has 21 words or if it has 25 words. No one is even going to count, okay? Remember that you're writing your articles for people as long as you can read the article and an average person can actually read your article and understand what's going on, you're fine, okay? Again, don't obsess with trying to get your readability score to green. There are many of my articles that are set to orange and people still read them, people still love the articles because the articles still make sense. Again, no one is going to bother about, oh my gosh, this author wrote this sentence in the passive voice, so I'm not gonna read it, I, you know, I, it's, it's a horrible article. No, <laughs> no one cares about that. As long as your content makes sense, the information is useful, people will overlook things like that, okay? So it's really it's really up to you. I, I can't say whether it's uh, it's bad or good for you to try and uh, fix these things. My only concern is that when you have a particular style of writing and people have, have come to recognize that style from you, when you begin getting all very analytical with the kinds of words you use, how many words are contained in a sentence, it might affect your natural way of writing. So be careful, okay? Don't get too obsessed with trying to get your uh, readability score to uh, green, all right? So that's basically it for the readability scores with uh, the Yoast SEO plugin. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much for watching the video. And as always, I will see you in the next class. All right, one thing I should mention before we begin to round up is that you can also do your keyword analysis and research right from your uh, back end over here. You will see the Y icon on top here. 
So when you hover over that, you will see the keyword research tool and we do have three different services. We have the AdWords external. If you want to pay for AdWords, you can do your research with the AdWords external service. Uh, we have the Google Trends, which you can click on. And then of course you can do your analysis of how popular your keywords are going to be. And then there's also the SEO book, which is actually a free and uh, it's a free alternative to the Google AdWords key planner tool. So if you haven't heard about it, it's pretty good. Um, some people don't like it. Some people like it, but you can come over here right now and read more about it. You'll have to create an account with them, first of all. And they do actually have a video all the way down here where you can watch more uh, on how to use the service. It's, it's a bit old, though. This was made back in 2011, but I think the service is still pretty relevant and you can still do some pretty uh, cool stuff with it. So that's it for the uh, keyword analysis services for Yoast SEO. And of course, you also have access to the SEO settings from here as well, just in case, you know, if you wanted to uh, change anything, you have access over here as well. All right, so that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next class. All right, so one last thing we should talk about before we round up is the use of something called the cornerstone content. Now, if you scroll all the way down here to the bottom of your blog post, under the focus keyword tab, you will see this checkbox asking if this article is cornerstone content. Now, this is a relatively uh, new feature that uh, Yoast SEO provides. And a cornerstone article is basically uh, one of your very best articles. It is the article that you want to be ranked highest on Google. All right. And the idea behind this here is, let's say, for example, you've written 10 uh, different blog posts about a very similar topic. You would typically want one of those articles to be your best article, the one that you want Google to choose. Otherwise, all those your 10 articles will be competing with one another uh, for space in the search results. So when you select a particular article to be your cornerstone uh, article, you're basically telling Google that, hey, this is one of the very best articles my entire blog has to offer. So it goes without saying that you should choose your cornerstones very carefully. Think of them as maybe the four or five pages that you want uh, a visitor to read if they first visit your website, which articles are the most precious to you or which articles are the most complete and authoritative. These are the kinds of articles that you should select as your cornerstone content. And if you click on the link right here, it will take you to the Yoast blog where you can actually read more about what the cornerstone content is and um, how you can actually write some really good content and then select it as your cornerstone uh, content article. So that's basically it. Thank you so much for watching the video. As always, I will see you in the next class. Now that you've seen what you can do with the free version of the Yoast SEO plugin, a question you might have is, is it actually worth you buying the premium version of the plugin? Well, under here where we have the premium tab, if you click on more information over here, you will see the comparison between the premium version of Yoast and then the free version of Yoast. Now, before I give you my honest opinion about this, let me first of all say that the premium version of any plugin, not just the Yoast SEO plugin, the premium version of any plugin is always better than the free version of that plugin. There is a reason why you're paying to get the premium version. The premium version always has more features. It's more powerful than the free version. That is always the case in my humble opinion and my experience. The real question you should be asking yourself is this difference, this additional features you're paying for, is it actually worth the price? In the case of Yoast SEO, you'll be paying $89 a year to have the premium version of this plugin. Now, here's the thing. If you are on a budget, okay, if you're on a budget, a tight budget, then in my humble opinion, I don't think the premium version is worth it. I don't think so. With a free version, you can do a lot. You can do quite a lot for your SEO. As long as you followed all the steps I've shown you in this course, and then you do other things like improving the speed of your website, you write regularly, you will be fine. You will be fine. 
you can save that money and buy yourself maybe a really awesome premium theme or buy some other premium plugins out there. I don't think the $89 is worth it if you are on a budget. However, obviously, if you have the money, if you can afford to pay $89 for Yoast SEO Premium, then by all means, go ahead and buy it because you will be getting a more powerful version of the Yoast SEO plugin. And over here, you can see the differences. You can optimize for five keywords per page with the premium version. With the free version, you only get one keyword per page. You can preview your page in Google, Bing, Facebook, and Twitter with the premium version. Uh, you can get real-time suggest suggestions for your internal links. Uh, you can get 24-7 support as well from the Yoast SEO team. Uh, no ads, you can get an overview of your SEO scores and much, much more features. So once again, if you are on a tight budget, I would not recommend you buy the premium version. However, if you have the money, if you can afford it, then by all means, go ahead and buy the premium version of the plugin. The premium version is always better than the free version of the plugin. So that's it, my humble opinion about the Yoast SEO premium plugin. Thank you for watching.